and, and quite honestly, my confidence level changed drastically. Our changing world and, and what we can do best for our kids to prepare them to be adults. The bottom line really is this, if, if you can get them healthy spiritually, they're going to be able to handle anything that gets thrown at them. And some of us are held back from so many things because of a lack of confidence. Now, and, and last week we talked about the, uh, the importance of the things we say and how that affects us mentally and spiritually and how that affects other people around us mentally and spiritually. And, and, and if you remember, sometime in last week's message, I said, you know, and next week we're going we're gonna to be studying about wisdom, and I, and, and which is what's coming up next in James chapter 3. And, and as I started studying it this week, God really gave me insight into wisdom that I've never seen before or that I've never really noticed. Uh, because it kind of flashbacked to when I started following Christ and the way my heart changed and, and, and quite honestly, my confidence level changed drastically. We, we've, we've talked before about our changing world and, and what we can do best for our kids to prepare them to be adults and, and, and for ourselves. And, and, and the, the bottom line really is this. If, if you can get them healthy spiritually, they're going to be able to handle anything that gets thrown at them. Now, I'm going to pray. And because uh, I really believe, I really believe this. I believe the topic I'm speaking on today, all of us struggle with it sometimes. Not in some part of your lives, but in other part of your lives. And some of us are held back from so many things because of a lack of confidence that we get to a point in our life where we just kind of lay down and, and don't even try. And, and I'll just tell you, that never feels good. We may say we're content or we really don't care. You might be like I was when I, was, when I lacked confidence as a young man and a teenager. My, the way I handled it, I became the jokester. I was the one that, you know, I, I was the one that would try to make everybody laugh and act like nothing bothered me. Nothing bothered me at all. But I want to tell you something. Inside, there was always that feeling of not measuring up. And we can change that all of us, in all areas of your life. So that's why today's message is called How to Be Confident Always, because I promise you, I promise you, you can be. And we're going to talk about some things today about wisdom, the wisdom from the world and the wisdom from God. And I just want you to get prepared to listen, okay? Because maybe as I've said that, you've kind of blocked it out. So let's pray. Father God, we just come to you this morning and we know that... Uh, I hope we all know how much we need you in our life all the time, just like the song we just sang. Father, the need is there. We live in a world that uh, we're challenged and tested and struggles and, and always, all the time. And, uh, and Lord, it's getting harder. It's getting more difficult. But you make it simple. You say, trust me. And Lord, there's people in here today, and, and I've even talked to some people this last week, that they're just not really sure that they trust you. They don't understand trusting you in all things. They don't understand that you want everything to work for the good according to your purpose. And, and that makes it really hard because, Lord, you just have to forgive us because we're selfish people. And Lord, I just pray right now for our hearts and minds to be totally open to what you would have us know from looking at these words taught to us by Solomon and by James and, and, uh, and, and Lord, by modeling and going after Jesus. I thank you that you give us that opportunity and that our sins are forgiven because of Jesus. And, and I just pray that no one leaves here today without knowing you personally. We thank you for that. And I pray this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. So as we look into this series of Next Level Faith, and I just want to start off for some, with some questions. Do you ever wonder, do you ever wonder why some people have more confidence than others? And if you have a psychology background like me, you look at everything from nature, nurture. What's nature, nurture? You're, some people na- nature-wise are born, they come out of the womb seeming like they're more confident than everybody else. You know, they duck their head and they're the kids that are trying to run through walls and all that other kind of stuff, you know. And, and, and you wonder why you see people that are that way and then when they get a little bit older, they just kind of back off or they get really rebellious or, or, or they struggle. They, the, the confidence just wasn't there that was in their nature. And, and, and you have to look at that and think, well, there's something happened in the nurture that, that messed that up, that, that changed that. Why do people lose their confidence? How can a person that seems to have it made commit suicide? Have you, do you ever wonder, you look at these people who are so talented and have made it, man. I mean, they just, you just go, man, if I just had the chance that they had and, and, and yet they do terrible things to, to commit suicide or, or just, or just get themselves in a mess by the, by the things that they do. For I always want to make sure we're all on the same page when I'm talking about something in particular. So here's the definition. I just got this straight out of the dictionary for confidence. You ready? Belief in oneself and one's powers or abilities. Self-confidence, self-reliance, assurance. Now those sound pretty good, don't they? But you know and I know that we all struggle with the ability to have that, that kind of confidence. Why does why do we have confidence in some areas and, and not in other areas? Have, have you ever said to yourself, I used to have confidence, but I just, I just, I just don't anymore. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm nervous about the, the people in, in my job. And, and you know, it, it seems like I'm, I'm just more anxious about everything that goes on around me all the time. I, I've always wished I had more confidence. And, and, and we struggle with that. So last week, we, we looked at the power of words. And I think, as I looked at wisdom this week, it just hit me. The thing that most changed my life, maybe it wasn't more practical. I'm just talking practically here because we always talk spiritually and I tell y'all everything is spiritual really. But, but the bottom line is this. I know when I started chasing Jesus seriously, I understood love better. I understood peace better. I understood joy better. And, 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 and if you just look at that spiritually, everybody go, yeah, 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 yeah. But here's how I know it made the biggest change on me. It changed the way I thought and looked at everything. Because listen to this, listen to this. It changed the source of my wisdom and the source of my confidence. Now think about that. It's a big deal, right? We think about all the spiritual stuff, and remember, all of it's spiritual, but, but here's what I can promise you. If God is real to you, God's word is real to you, you're living it, you're chasing after him, you're wanting to do his will, you are going to have a wisdom that comes from God, and that's going to change the way you look and the confidence and the foundation you have for every single thing that you do in your life. To be a more confident person, we have to learn to change where we get our confidence. I, you know, I was a counselor before I became a pastor, but, but I was also a person who had a lack of confidence at one time in my life. And, 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 and I just wrote down some things that, and, and some of you are going to relate to these. You go, oh, that's me. Oh, that's me. Oh, that. uh, we, we tend to worry about what people think. Now, now here, here's what we got to be careful of. And you see this on Facebook all the time. I don't care what people think. No, it doesn't say don't care what people think because we're supposed to love God and love people. But we're not to worry about what people think. If we're living our life the way we're supposed to, right? If we're living our lives the way we're supposed to, and we're feeling love from God, then what that means is we can take crud from other people. 
but we still care about them. We just don't have to sit around and worry about what they think when we're doing the right things. You choose to be fearful with change or new situations. I've seen people get promotions or get new jobs and they're freaking out all of a sudden. The, the confidence they had when they were so comfortable doing this job is all of a sudden gone away and they're not sure how that's going to happen. You also tend to pay more attention to the things that you do wrong instead of the things that you do right. You choose to just sit back and fearfully let opportunities pass you by. You choose to mess up relationships. You know, we wanna one up everybody, we wanna be better, we wanna be smarter, we wanna be the one winning the argument. We, we, we sabotage relationships because we don't feel good about ourselves. We choose to get stuck in that job that we hate instead of changing our attitude about it or changing jobs. You choose to not believe good things about you. It's even hard to take a compliment. You know, one of the things I had to learn, it's, it's kind of cool when somebody compliments you. It's kind of cool when somebody gives you something. I remember one time, uh, 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 somebody gave me some money. I'd gone back to school and I was doing what God wanted me to do and somebody gave me some money anonymously and I remember going to the church secretary and I went to her and, and I remember saying, who gave me this money? She goes, I'm not gonna tell you who gave, and I'll just tell you it was a thousand bucks and that was 20, that was a bunch of money, right? It helped us out with bills and everything. And she said, I'm not gonna tell you. And she, I said, no, I, I can't accept that. I, I gotta give this back. And, and she said, she got in my face and she was like a mom to me. She, she goes, Royal, don't you ever take away somebody's opportunity to bless you, you know? But, but I had a hard time accepting that and, 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 and you know, and we have a hard time with that. So we have to change. So, so I wrote a new, here's a new definition for confidence. And I wrote this this morning so it's not on your notes. And, if, and it'll be, uh, I'll try to remember to put it on my notes when, when I put the blog up on it. But, but here's my new confidence, definition for confidence. Right here we go. Instead of, I tell you what, look at the, oh, you, I don't even have the new, I don't have the other confidence. Just listen to me, okay? <laughs> Squirrel. All right, here we go. Belief in God and God's powers or abilities. Trust in God's love for me. God reliance, not self-reliance. God assurance, not self-assurance. God has my back. He has my front. He's in me. And whatever happens, it is for the good of the plan that he has for me. Dude, that's confidence. And it really, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's simple. And you have the help of God to get you there. And, and that's what we're going to look at. And we're going to break that down here in James as, as we look at, at wisdom. Uh, as I came to know God better, I gained humility Listen to this. Listen. As I came to know God better, I gained humility. And as I lived a more humble life, I came to know God better. Is that cool? I mean, that is so cool. And, you know, we, we, we run into so many proud Christians and you just want to slap their face off, you know, because really the bottom line is, are you, if, 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 are you willing to give complete control and trust and everything up to God because there's not another person on the planet that can take care of you? Your mama is not going to take as good a care of you as God is. But you've got to put yourself into his hands. And, and as you develop that confidence, it will develop in every other, every part of your life. Uh, if you focus on honoring God with your words, just stay with me. I'm progressing this. This is a sentence from last week, okay? <laughs> Y'all are going, man, he is all over the place today. I'm just excited. So just let's get excited together. If you focus on honoring God with your words, you will improve your heart. Agree? 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 We saw that last week, okay? So next, pl next progression. While improving your heart, you will obtain wisdom. You ready? You there? While, while improving your heart, you will obtain wisdom. Why is that? Because your heart is being improved by who? By God in our relationship with God. And then wisdom from God will give you confidence in every situation. 
I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise. Wisdom from God will give you confidence. I'm not saying that means you're gonna knock everything out of the park. I'm not saying that means you're gonna get every sales deal that you attempt. I'm not saying that you're not gonna have a company that's gonna fail. I'm not saying that you're gonna get that promotion. When you're in God's will and you're doing what God wants and you're growing in God's wisdom, it ain't going to naturally happen like you think it's going to happen. There's going to be ways that you go, wow, there's no way in the world I could have imagined that it would happen this good. And there's going to be times when you're going to go, God, I wanted that so bad. He's going, hang in there. You weren't ready for that. I got other plans for you. It's going to be... And sometimes it's in the middle of pain. Remember, those pains are tests. Those are things that strengthen us. So wisdom from God will give you confidence in every single situation. Look at this verb, Proverbs 4. This is written by Solomon, uh, smartest guy that ever lived, wisest guy that ever lived, because that's what he asked. When he became king, the, uh, the prophet came to him and said, Solomon, God, God is going to grant your wish. It's like God is going to be your genie in a bottle. What do you want? He goes, I want God's will. That's what I want. I want God's wisdom. That's what I want. So God gave him that and then blessed him with everything. But look, so here's what he says, what God says to us. Look at verse 10. My child, listen to me. Remember, we have to prepare ourselves to listen. When you get ready to read the Bible, dude, pray. Ask for forgiveness. Soften your heart. Listen. My child, listen to me and then do what? Do as I say. Do as I say. And you will have a long and good life. Anybody here want a long and good life? You may not necessarily want a long life, but if it's long, you want it good, right? You want it good. You want it good. Verse 11. I will teach you wisdom ways. Wisdom ways. And lead you in straight paths. This is God talking. Now, don't we want to learn? We, we spend so much energy trying to do things that the world says works, that the world says works. And, and I'm telling you, the world teaches some things that work. But if that's what your confidence, just think about it. If your confidence is in how well you do in your job, whatever, how much is that going to change when that gets wiped out from underneath you? Because here's the deal in this God wisdom thing is, is it will never change. God will never change. He's always there. He's always the same. He says, I'm going to teach you wisdom ways and lead you in straight paths. Verse 12. Here we go. Here we go. When you walk, you won't be held back. He's talking about God wisdom here. He's not talking about the promotion. He's not talking about the new car. He's talking about the God wisdom. And when he takes you through those, you're not going to be held back in your growth. As you listen to God and you lead, what's going to happen is, is you're going to grow. And when you run, you're not going to stumble because it's all going to be about God. And no matter what happens, you can go, I'm still on track. I'm still on track. And here's the cool thing. I remember when, uh, when uh, Lisa got pregnant with Nick, uh, I worked at a company and... I'd been trying to get a promotion that you could only get if you had a college degree, and I didn't have a college degree. And, and, uh, and my, uh, I went to my boss. I, I said, I, I really want to be in customer service. I, I just, I can do that. I go, well, Roy, you don't have a degree. I, you, you know me, boss. You know, you know that I can do that. I, I, can, I can do that. And he goes, well, let me see what I can do. So a little while later, he calls me in his office. He goes, Roy, I got you an interview. <clears throat> For customer service job. I'm just telling you, this was unheard of. It was completely unheard of. Without a college degree, there was no chance. This guy just liked me. And he said, I I've got you this interview. It's, uh, it was like the next week in Temple, Texas. And uh, I'm great, right? So I go home and I tell Lisa, I got this opportunity. We're talking about moving, which was going to be a tough deal. All of our family was here in this area and everything. But, but I told my boss that I was wanted the interview and that I would take it. And just a couple of days later, Lisa went to the doctor and she was pregnant with Nick. And in my gut, because I was already a pretty strong Christian at this point, in my gut, I didn't think moving was a right idea. 
I can't tell you how many families I've counseled with kids and wives that husbands hop and move to jobs all over the country. And it's, it's not, it's usually not a good thing. I'm just telling you, I counsel people with that all the time. And, and I remember going to my boss and said, uh, I just, uh, Lisa's pregnant. I just can't, I can't do this. He goes, okay. You could tell he was disappointed. A couple of years later, both kids, I went, said, hey, you think you can get me another job or interview with customer service? And I'd heard about one in Irving and a couple of local ones. He said, Royal, I stuck my neck out and got you that interview. And he said, once you turn that down, he said, you're not going to ever get another shot. I'm just telling you. Well, look, that was a decision that I made because it was a God thing. And of course I was disappointed, but who knows what I'd be doing right now? I'm doing the thing I love now more than anything you could ever possibly imagine. And what if I had done that? I would have never gone back to college. Who needed college? I got the job that college people had. All of that stuff that I wouldn't be where I'm at. And you just got to realize as you're going forward, you're going to make some tough decisions that God wants you to make. You will be blessed. You won't understand it right then. But you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. God's not going to hold you back. He's going to keep moving you forward. We believe at Life Connection Church that faith is a leap. And what we mean by that is that the Apostle Paul writes that we need to learn to listen when we hear the Word of God, engage with it, apply it to our life. And then when we do, when we do that process, we will produce Christianity. We will be that Christian that draws other people toward Christianity and lives our life. And, and the, the leap verse today is James 3.13. Look what it says. It says... If you are wise, if you are wise and understand God's ways. Now, I, listen to that just a minute. Here's what that's saying. If you are wise, you are going to understand God's ways. So this is God wisdom here. This is God wisdom. This isn't your job wisdom. It isn't cultural wisdom. It isn't street knowledge. It's, it's God wisdom. If you are wise and understand God's ways, he says, then prove it by living an honorable life, doing what? Good words, works. Remember we talked about that. This doesn't just mean buying somebody's sandwich at Chick-fil-A. Those are good things, but good works, anytime scripture talks about good works, it's talking about doing God's job. Doing stuff that God, being God's love with skin. Not, not just being kind to people, but living your life the way you're supposed to. Live this honorable life, the kind of Christian you're supposed to be, doing good works with the humility that comes from what? So here's the deal. If you have trouble with humility, you're angry all the time, you want to be in control all the time, you, you just struggle, it messes with your relationships, it's messed you up with your job, it, it's, you know, you, you used to think it was a thing that would get you all the promotions and everything you want, you, you struggle with that all the time and, and you wonder why you don't feel very close to God. Look, if you're in that kind of pride, selfish mode all the time, you're not going to feel the humility because humility comes from wisdom. Closeness and obedience to God. That's where humility comes from. That's where wisdom comes from, and that's where humility. So I'm going to give you three quick things about man's wisdom and God's wisdom. You ready? Number one, here's, here's a choice we have to make. You have to choose man or God's wisdom. That's a choice, and I'm telling you, that is, this isn't just a major decision thing. This is an everyday decision. I'll give you, here's an example. God tells us to give a certain amount of the money he gives us away. We're to support the church. We're supposed to be generous to people. And there are people who tithe, but don't tithe for the right reason. You're going, what? They tithe? They don't? Yeah, they tithe and God doesn't even honor their tithing. Why? Because scripture says it's about attitude. And if you're thinking, well, what does that mean? Well, if something happens to you financially this month, and instead of giving to God, you pull back from it, then you're giving for the wrong reason in the first place. Does that make sense? That's just an easy, it's always easy to use money as an example, because that's one thing that for most of us, that's the last thing God gets from us, is the money that he's already given us. 
But, 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 but that's just an example. We have to choose man's wisdom. God's wisdom is this. People come to me all the time and go, you know what, Roy, when our finances get here, we're going to start giving. We're going to, man, I, I, just wish, I just wish I did better because I would just like to help people. I, I'd like to be able to buy meals and do this and, and do that. And, and what I say to those people now, and remember I used to be a people pleaser, so I would kind of back off. But what I say to those people now is, look, if you, if you, uh, if you do that, that's God's wisdom. God's going to take care of you. We see, boy, I wish I, I wish I could just lay out for you. That was the last thing God got from me was my money. The last thing. Dude, and I'm, and I'm just telling you, I was one of those guys that was in the church every time the doors opened, and in my mind, I was earning it. So I didn't have to pay it. <laughs> and God got my money when we had no income coming in. I got desperate enough that I went to God and said, Okay, God, I just changed careers. I got two kids. I got a mortgage. I, and nothing. I said, but I promise you, starting right now and for the rest of my life, I will tithe on every penny you give me. And I will tithe first. I won't have to figure out at the end of the month how much money I got left. God, you're first. Most life-changing thing Lisa and I ever, ever did. Not long after that, we got out of debt. All kinds of things God blessed because we made that. And I'm just telling you, if you're struggling, we got this Financial Peace University thing going on right now. There are people that are going to come out of that and their lives are going to be changed, drastically changed because they're completely learning how to handle the, their money and how important handling money is to, to where they're at spiritually. Choose man's wisdom for God. Man's wisdom originates from the world, the flesh, and from the devil. You're going, what? Well, look at this verse. James 3.15. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and what? Demonic. This would be a good Halloween message, wouldn't it? Jealousy, so that's man's wisdom. That's how you know. If you're being man's wisdom, then the best way to know is that it's a selfish thing. You're thinking more about yourself than when you're thinking about God. But if you're doing God's wisdom, God's wisdom is from above. God's wisdom is from above. Look what uh, James 1.17, this goes back to James 1. He says, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down from us. Now, I want to I put this in context. Remember, Scripture always goes in context. Not just necessarily the context of the words that are around it, but the context of the whole Scripture. Here's the deal. A good and perfect gift could be you got laid off. Couldn't it? Now, ooh. But it could be. A good and perfect gift could be a house fire. A good and perfect gift could be grandma died. All the praise we did. And, you know, it, and again, it's, it's all attitude. It's, it's, okay, God, this is a painful thing. But how many of you guys have ever worked out before? Huh? And like the next day you can't walk. <laughs> Growth is painful. It is. Look, I want to just tell you something. If your life is just going great right now, oh man, everything's, you know, I won the lottery. If you won the lottery, you better come talk to me. But, but, <laughs> but all this good stuff is happening and, and, and I'm just, I'm just, I must be so good with God right now. Whew. If storm ain't happening now, it's going to happen because you can't grow without it. You know, you just can't grow without it. So choose God's wisdom or man's wisdom. That, that's a choice you have all the time in every single thing you do and everything that happens in your life. And number two, the evidence of your source of wisdom. Here's what they are. The evidence of your source of wisdom. If you're choosing man's wisdom, look at verse 14. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, I would say this is an uh-oh verse. If you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambitious... Uh, blah, <sighs> if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. Dude, that was me! In my younger, selfish less confident years, that was me. 
I never told a story without embellishing it, ever. Dude, I was a car salesman. I could do that good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, I always, and, and, and I would laugh about things, and, you know, I would do stupid things. I never really liked alcohol. I'd go to a party as a 20-year-old, and I would walk around with one beer all night long and act like I was drunker than a skunk. You know why? Because when you're drunk and a skunk, people just go, oh, he's just drunk. And it, it doesn't matter what stupid thing you say or whatever, you know, but I'll just tell you, it's still stupid. <laughs> You cover it up. You're jealous. You're selfishly ambitious. That means what's, what you get is more important than what you do for God. And that's called pride. And it'll nail you. It'll nail you. It'll nail you. If you want to get God wisdom, you got to get away from that. And that was me so bad. Jealousy, self-centeredness, pride, dishonesty. I wrote some, uh, did I write these? Okay, look, jealousy says this, I don't want you to be better than me. Self-centeredness says it's all about me. Who's it all about? It's always about God, right? It's always all about God. You, that's a, that will be the answer that's right every single time you answer that. Pride, I'm better and I'm smarter than you. Dishonesty, I have to lie to cover up my weaknesses. Now, I'm going to give you some cool stuff. This is God wisdom. You ready? Let's do God wisdom. If you're wise, here's th verse 13 again. If you're wise, you understand God's ways. Prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom. This should be a refrigerator verse. This should be something you look at regularly. But I've written down some qualities that come from these verses and then statements you ought to be able to say about yourself. All right? I promise you this is very practical. You ought to be able to live this stuff. Humility. I want to give God the glory. You ought to be able to say that. Matter of fact, if this became your prayer, if you were to take these statements and they were part of your prayers in the mornings or just part of your mantra or what you did and you really believe, it's game changer. I want to give God his glory. Look at verse 17. The wisdom is from above is first of all pure. It is also peace loving, gentle at all times and willing to yield to others. It's full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. So here, here's some things and some statements go with them number one the first one pure I should be pure that means I will strive to live a holy life you know what a holy life means it means working for God I know most per church people think that's the pastor's job and the children's minister's job and no it's holy I will live a holy life that means I'll I'll be an accountant as a holy life, I'll be a parent as a holy life. I'll be a friend and a neighbor as a holy life. That really changes where you go for partying and everything, doesn't it? I will live a holy life. I will live, I will strive, strive. And the cool thing is when you mess up, now if you catch yourself just messing up all the time and you just live messing up, then you're not focused. Refocus and you get back. I will strive to live a holy life. It changes things. Peace. I live to be in peace with God and man. That's, that's what I want. I want to live to be in peace with God and man. That's going to change the rude things you say on Facebook. It's going to change who you're, the way you're trashing Democrats and Republicans. It's going to change all that because you want to be in peace with God and every man. Why? Because if it comes to spirituality and I, and I need to have an impact on this person spiritually, they need to know God makes a difference in my life. That's, that, that's your goal. Remember, remember, if it's all about God, it really doesn't matter who becomes president. And it ain't worth losing a friend over it. It's not. You, I, I love, I, I, when somebody gets upset with me, you know what bothers me the most now? is I may have blown every opportunity I have to make a positive impact on that person. And, it, and that's just the way that we live our life. I, I'll be at peace with God. Gentle, I will speak truth with love and respect. I will speak truth with love and respect. Now, now let me tell you something. Sometimes we aren't ready to say the truth until they've heard the love and respect. Till they've seen the, we showed you the video a couple of weeks ago of the, of the atheist who, who just went on and on about this person who came to him and shared the Bible with him. But he, he was just amazed at the way the guy loved and respected him. Yielding, I am tolerant of our differences. 
I understand we have weaknesses. I'm not going to judge a non-Christian the way I get judged by God. I'm I'm not because I I have a, a role that I have to play. Merciful. I will forgive those who harm me. I will forgive those who harm me. Generous. I will be a doer of good deeds. I will be generous with my time, with my money, with my talents. I will be generous. We call that here God's love with skin. Sincere. I will be who I say I am. I will be who I say I am. And, and you got to be careful. Um, sometimes, remember I told you it's the person who's hearing who decides whether you're being respectful or not. I did a whole series one time on different religions and what they believed and how Christianity is different. And, and, and one time I went on Facebook and, and I just said, uh, this is what Christians believe, this is what Mormons believe. I can't remember which faith. It was just, it was just, and it was just a, it was truth. A guy who had never, ever interacted with me on Facebook before messaged me. Royal, I just can't believe you're so hateful. Guess what I did? I got his number and called him and told him he's going to hell. No, (laughs) I deleted the post. And I wasn't going to argue with them. There wasn't nothing to argue there. You know, I deleted the post. It, it wasn't worth. So I got to thinking, if that bugged him, who else is that bugging? You know, who else am I going to lose an opportunity to, to, to share love and truth in, in the gospel with? Okay? So, so those, those are, man, if you could just say those. Oh, I was going to get y'all to repeat those, but never mind. We'll go back. Number three. Number three. <laughs> The results of your choices. Ready? I'm going to give you some results. And I've lived these, so I know what I'm talking about. Man's wisdom equals anxiety. For whoever there is, for wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, you will find disorder and evil of every kind. That is an uh-oh verse. That is, and you know what jealousy is. You know what selfish ambition is. You know what that is. If you don't, look it up in the dictionary. You could Google it. You'll find millions of things on it. And then God's wisdom is peace, contentment, and confidence. Guys, I promise the confidence part. And then what happens, here's here's how the church works. I talked to somebody a couple of weeks ago who was really kind of chasing after God hard for a little while. and, And there's been an illness in their family and things going on. And he's really kind of backing off from God right now he's thinking you know I've been doing all this going after God stuff and he ought to not be letting this happen to us and it and if he goes to the outside world they're going to say well why are you believing God anyway but if he comes to us we listen we say we're sorry you have to be careful not to say something like, well, God's got a plan. Look, when somebody's in that kind of pain and they're, they're not ready to hear, God's got a plan. They're, you just, I don't know why. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to love you. I'm going to listen. I'm going to let you cuss God out if you want to cuss God out. I, I'm, I'll, I'll be your Christian friend here for you. That, that's, what, that's what I'm going to be. And that's what you got to do. And, and some of y'all may be going through that right now. And, and, and that's, that's why we need each other. God's wisdom is peace, contentment, and confidence. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. That's that thing I'm talking about, right? That on Facebook, any, I, 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 I'm just going to... There is someone here today who came last week because they saw their friend post on Facebook every week that they had just checked into Life Connection Church. So here's what that meant. What that meant was this person has a good influence on this person and when they kept seeing this person checking in and saying they love Life Connection Church and love God and love people. When this person decided they were going to look for a new church, they had a connection to go to. That's why we're starting this intentionally social media thing. 
so that when people are looking for God, they know the people who love God and have a good experience with God. And, and, and it, it's so important. It's so important that I, I know you hear me talking about that all the time, but, but that, that's really what it's all about. If, if someone doesn't trust me or they don't like what I say or they hate me because of something, I have no chance of telling them that God loves them. They could care less. People don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. Right? Y'all have heard that before. You've heard that before. It's about choice. You, if, if you want to be confident, if you, wanna, if you were coming here today and you thought, oh, Royal's going to do 10 steps on how to be confident, I will give you 10 steps. If you want 10 steps, come find me. But the foundation is you choose your source of wisdom. That's the foundation. That's, that's it. If you will choose God as your source of wisdom, what will happen is you'll have confidence, you'll have contentment, you'll have peace. Peace.